everyone, welcome to the 3D Experience Forum here at beautiful Caesars Palace. Today we're talking with Bob Derigish. He is the Director of IT Services, Parker Hannafin. Bob, could you tell us about the partnership uh, between Parker and uh, Dassault Systems over the years and uh, share the amazing amount of experience you've got with regard to that relationship? It is a pretty amazing partnership. We've been a customer of Dassault's uh, originally through IBM when they had that partnership, uh, starting in 1984 when we installed Katia version two on a mainframe. Uh, and I happened to be the one that got to do that installation. So I've been very familiar with the partnership ever since. In the uh, late 90s and early 2000s, things started to evolve further. We recognized the need to have more control over the designs that we were creating using Katia, and we coincidentally held off purchasing a PLM solution until Dassault purchased it, and then we purchased it directly from them. Mm -hmm. So that was our foray into the second uh, portfolio solution that Dassault provides, Anovia. Uh, since that time, we've, we've done bits and pieces in some of the other brands, but uh, our focus is heavily on manufacturing and controlling the process so that we produce quality products for, uh, in the case of aerospace, all of our customers. Because if you've flown on a commercial airliner, it flew because of Parker products. Mm -hmm. So additive manufacturing has really started to revolutionize uh, the overall manufacturing landscape, all the way from prototyping into production. And I could imagine with the proliferation of products in the aerospace group that you've seen, uh, have seen the impact of additive manufacturing in your business. What are some of your insights based on the uh, progression of that adoption of that technology? It's interesting because additive manufacturing has actually been around for more than 25 years. We've seen bits and pieces of it. We've been experimenting with it for a long, long time. Uh, most of the products that we make for aerospace are metallic. So there's some form of metal um, machining that we've had to do historically. Mm -hmm. And so we're just getting to that point now where additive for metal is actually becoming uh, something that we can use in a production environment because it doesn't take as long as it took previously in the, in the years preceding. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the last, I would say, eight years has been focused on prototypes and tooling in, in aerospace in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't gotten to that point yet, but we're, it's imminent, uh, literally, for us to have a part that is metallic in, in structure and approved by the FAA to go onto a commercial airline. That's fascinating. So that we're literally weeks away at this point from getting that final uh, qualification to go on an aircraft. So that's very exciting for us. It's been a long journey to get there. Most of our products are flight critical. Uh, everything from flight control actuation to fuel and quantity management and hydraulic systems. Mm -hmm. um, in this particular case, it is part of the fuel system that we're producing uh, on, a, on a metal printer. And the FAA has a lot of questions that they have to ask about how that's going to work. It, frankly, the aircraft can't take off without having fuel. And we deliver the fuel to the combustion chamber in the engine. So mm -hmm. that is tr critically important. Make sure that it works and continues to work throughout the flight. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a rigor that uh, frankly, was was the same rigor we had in the 60s and 70s before I started working there in terms of where we were going with jet engines and how we started producing those products. But now it's a new methodology and they just want to make sure that we do it correctly. So it has taken the better part of 18 months to get to the point where the FAA is about ready to agree with us that we can do this. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to use additive manufacturing to go from design to manufacturing at a level of scale and speed that you've never been able to accomplish before? Absolutely, we're looking at several centers of excellence in terms of where we're installing added, additive metal printers. Um, we have a, a concentration, if you will, of different divisions in uh, the Northeast Ohio area, mm -hmm. in Southern California, mm -hmm. uh, as well as Ogden, Utah, Texas, and, and Michigan. So we're concentrating on some of those areas to be able to put those, then that we can share them. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that Dassault is, is providing on the platform, on the 3D Experience platform today, is a, the ability to have an internal marketplace. So we don't have to necessarily install a printer in every one of our facilities, but we can share those printers across facilities 
based on scheduling and workload and how many units of each type that we need to produce. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's additional things that we're looking at, uh, frankly an additive, because it's not just about reprinting or printing a part that we've done for years through traditional machining or casting and, and remachining processes. Now we're looking at, well, how can we redesign that or how can we print an assembly in one pass as opposed to 10, 15, 20 different components that we then have to assemble and braze and weld in order to be able to make it work in that particular case. So we're, we're also looking upstream to the engineering community to say, how can we now design for additive and not just print the designs that we've been doing for the last 50 years? Mm -hmm. And so the 3D Experience platform is giving you the ability to move more and more into a generative design methodology and being able to scale that engineering expertise and be able to take the engineering expertise that you have that's so, such a great strength of Parker and be able to propagate it across the product strategy. Absolutely, generative design is an answer to a dream we've had for the better part of 25 years and that is to turn the process around and stop going from design to analysis and actually have analysis drive the design. So look at the things that we need from a fit and, and form perspective, as well as the loads and boundary conditions for the product, have the analysis actually determine what that part should look like, and then we can use CAD to actually clean it up and produce that, that documentation, if you will, that's necessary to define what that part is because we use that analysis up front in generative design to actually create the part in a different flow. Mm -hmm. uh, that also gives us that ability to speed up the process and, and get our time to market, if you will, although we don't really produce product to market, we produce it to contract, so our customers define when we have to finish that design, when we have to get it to production. In this manner, we can actually do more designs have some trade studies and still produce that product in a timely manner so that the customer is satisfied. Mm -hmm. I think one of the most fascinating aspects going into the future for Parker is the ability to look at the metallurgical aspects of the, of the actual material you're building the parts out of and be able to use the 3D experience platform to be able to intermediate the metallurgy and the actual design and be able to produce a part that scales immediately. That's, that's one of the exciting things is that now we can actually produce materials that we know exactly how they're going to react. If it's close to or in the combustion chamber and it has very high vibration and obviously heat, uh, things that it has to be able to respond to and, and still perform, mm -hmm. uh, we, can, we can adapt some of those materials that we've used historically and, and make them perform fit for f that purpose that they were actually being designed for. Mm -hmm. So it combines a lot of the things that we've done over the years with our chemists and our metallurgists in terms of what and how do those in individual uh, materials actually support what we're trying to do. Then we also throw it through the engineers to be able to use generative design to combine that, as well as the functionality that the printers provide to be able to blend or, or do things like heat treat or uh, relieve residual stress on a part while it's being printed so that when it comes off of the printer, it has very little post-processing necessary and we can actually ship the product sooner uh, even though it might take longer to print than it would have historically to try to do it with a milling machine, for example. So it's, a, it's an end-to-end -end process that is dramatically improved, we believe. And overarching all this is the ability to bring metallurgy, your chemists, your design engineers all together and excel at quality with an aftermarket product, with the, the product that your customers are looking for. I think that's just fascinating. Yeah, quality is still number one. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah. can't, we can't ship product. Uh, it's interesting when, when I hear you know, other industries where they talk about uh, they're going from parts per million to parts per billion. Uh, we've never produced a billion of one part because it's aerospace. You know, mm -hmm. There might be you know, 3,000 would be a good run rate for an aircraft type and we don't reuse those same parts that we produce on a different aircraft type. So every part is designed for that platform that it's going to fly on. And so we don't produce at the same levels as some of those other industries. So, you know, one part per billion and we only produce 3,000 of them, 
we can't have one part per 3,000. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an aircraft on ground condition. The airline that is flying that aircraft isn't making any money and we don't want them to come back and blaming us for that. Sure. In addition, safety obviously is critically important to everyone. Uh, my son's an airline pilot. I want to make sure that he can leave every day, go to work, fly the plane, and get home and see my grandkids. So uh, we want to make sure that it happens correctly. Uh, safety is obviously number one, but in order to be able to do that safety, you have to have quality. Bob, thanks very much for a fascinating conversation, and thank you. And if you'd like additional information on the 3D Experience platform, please go to our website. Make it a great day.